Hi, we're Suburban Backyard, where we take our big dreams and cram them into our little yard. Never really finding a travel vehicle that met our needs or budget, we finally jumped on the bus, the schoolie bus. With so many amazing conversions to consume on YouTube and my hubby's treasure trove of skill, I knew we could make this happen in our small space. So meet our cheese wagon. She's an O2 Bluebird FE with a 5.9 Cummins and an Allison transmission. Our plan is to add a two foot roof raise and add a 10 foot garage for our off-road vehicles. We're not sure how well this is gonna turn out, but we're not scared to find out. Early this year, we found out a school up north was retiring a fleet of buses. We knew there must be a gem or two in that bunch. We drove about three hours north to look at as many as 30 buses. We were lucky to spend a lot of time with the bus bar mechanics and get an idea of what kind of maintenance each bus had, their shortfalls, and their features. There were a ton of variables between the bus styles, the amount of years on each of them, the mileage, and the condition. We were lucky enough to narrow it down to just three buses we were going to bid on. Auction day came, and we were ready. After a tense back and forth, we won bus number 199. The auction stated the buses were running, however our previous experience in auction vehicles meant we wanted to be ready for anything. To avoid a costly haul, at minimum we usually bring spare batteries with us. In this case we didn't have 8D batteries laying around, and after a full day of searching town, only one store carried them, and they were priced well over $350. So we decided to chance it, and asked to use the truck to jump the battery if needed. Before the sun rose, we jumped in the truck, grabbed breakfast, and hit the road. After we completed the paperwork, we found out we were not going to be able to take our truck to the lot. They gave us a jumper box instead. And as expected, the bus wouldn't start. With large batteries, the jump box just wouldn't cut it. Thankfully, with a little ether and a jump from the service truck, we headed. <laughs> Sit out of the bag, you little fuckers! Driving the cheese wagon home was a bit of a challenge. Our route was long and had steep inclines and descents. There was also very little service. Our path took us directly through nothing Arizona. Since we've seen our fair share of buses being towed back to the valley, we didn't want to join those ranks and kept our pace leisurely. Of course, when your husband pulls the bus over unexpectedly, you think the worst. In this case, he just had to pee. Closer to home, the traffic grew. Despite pleas to do a few donuts in the cul-de-sac, we parked her out front of our home for the neighbors to see. After a quick lunch, we jumped into action. First, the seats needed to come out. My husband was the lucky winner who got to go underneath the bus and hold the nuts still from underneath the carriage. I was surprised at how easy it was to take out, and it was great to have a blank template. It was time to get this thing clean. You can imagine the amount of troll hair and boogers we found was astounding. And the looks from the neighbors were the best part. Since we needed a lot of room, it was going to take some time to reorganize our backyard. As mentioned, we're no stranger to auctions, so our backyard is full of random vehicles. Ones of which our puppies love. So, for now, our cheese wagon is going to hang out at my parents' place. Don't worry, we're going to bring it home soon and show the puppies.